Yeah. Welcome, everyone, to the Marijuana Times Show. For January 19th, 2018, I'm your host, Joe Claire. Welcome, to everyone, listening and watching. For those of you on video, you can find these videos at marijuanatimes.org. Obviously, also, you search the Marijuana Times Show on YouTube and Facebook. There's also an audio version of the show, an audio-only version of the show. You take on the go, search iTunes, Apple Podcasts for the Marijuana Times Show. You'll find the Marijuana Times Show on Apple Podcasts. You find uh, everything else at marijuanatimes.org. Articles, videos, a lot of great writers. Every episode of this show, all that stuff, marijuanatimes.org. Today we're talking about New Jersey's new governor and him keeping the state on track and the state being on track to legalize adult use marijuana. Also, the new Marijuana Justice Act in the House. You know, there's a similar version in the Senate, introduced by Senator Cory Booker. Now there's a House version. We'll tell you about that. And also, nine reasons to end the war on marijuana. It's a very interesting article written by former NBA player Al Harrington. I'll read you a little bit of it. The first part of it is a story about his grandmother. It's a very long article. All the articles, everything I talk about, of course, is linked, as always, in the description of this video, wherever you may find this video. First, of course, i tell you, the Marijuana Times Show is brought to you by NatureSideCannabis.com. Go check out their products and their line of all-natural pesticide products. If you're a cannabis cultivator and you're a legal cannabis cultivator in places like Colorado or Oregon or Washington, you have pest problems with your cultivation, more than likely you want to take care of it, but you don't want to use harmful pesticides because you don't want to put harmful chemicals into the product that you're selling. But you also, at the same time, you want to also pass regulations. You want to use, use approved pesticides. Well, nature side cannabis pesticides are approved in Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. And uh, they can help you become regulatory compliant in whatever state you're in. Go check them out, naturesidecannabis.com, a proud sponsor of the Marijuana Times Show. Check out their line of organic, all natural pesticides and be regulatory compliant in your state. Don't use harmful chemicals. Grow safe and poison free with NatureSideCannabis.com. Our first story is from MarijuanaTimes.org. New Jersey governor is following through on promises of legalization. It's a story by Julia Granowitz over at Marijuana Times. Last November, she writes, voters in New Jersey decided to make a big change for their state when they elected Phil Murphy as their new governor where their previous governor, Chris Christie, was a diehard prohibitionist. Why is that an understatement? Murphy has expressed an interest <laughs> in legalizing cannabis within the state and made sure the voters knew he was doing. He was holding to his word by reminding everyone of that fact shortly after he was inaugurated. Quote, a stronger and fairer New Jersey embraces criminal justice reform comprehensively, and that includes a process to legalize marijuana, he said, shortly after taking the oath of office. According to the Washington Times, the president of the New Jersey Senate previously promised that a cannabis legalization bill would be on the governor's desk within 100 days of him taking office, which happens the 100 day mark somewhere in April, I believe. New Jersey, uh, if that is true, New Jersey will be not be far behind Vermont when it comes to being the first states to legalize through the legislature. So, in other words, we're in a spot now where eight states have legalized adult use marijuana through the ballot box. Some have been doing it for years. Retail sales have been around for years in places like Colorado and Washington and Oregon and more recently in uh, Alaska. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we have a lot of data. We know what happens when it comes to this, when it comes to marijuana legalization. Uh, so now that we're at a point to where, to a point where it's up to the legislators in a lot of these states, because a lot of these states you can't get anything on the ballot. They're, you know, it's not a, a petition state. So you have to go through the legislature. And Vermont has done that. Now New Jersey's talking about doing that. New Hampshire's talking about doing that. So we'll see. It's a, it's a new era of legalization if there are states where you don't have to go through the ballot box and actually get the politicians, the so-called representatives of the people themselves, to pass these laws and implement them. Well, that's definitely a good thing. So go New Jersey. If you're in New Jersey, well, you know, contact your representative. Let them know. I, I support this. I support the governor. I support marijuana legalization, so let's get it done. This next story is from Leafly.com. Lee and Kana support, uh, sponsor House version of the Marijuana Justice Act. Representative Barbara Lee, who's a Democrat from California, and Representative Ro Kana, also a Democrat from California, 
introduced the House version of the Marijuana Justice Act, the companion bill to Senator Cory Booker's legislation, which is S-1689, the Marijuana Justice Act, which Booker introduced in the Senate late last August, would end federal cannabis prohibition and help correct decades of injustice surrounding the discriminatory enforcement of marijuana criminalization laws in the United States. Booker's bill would get the federal government out of the prohibition game by declaring that the Controlled Substances Act would no longer apply to cannabis. Now, the bill would not declare marijuana legal in all 50 states. It would simply remove the federal illegality and allow each state to regulate cannabis in its own way. States with criminal penalties for cannabis would keep those laws, at least until voters or legislators decided to change them. States with legal regulated cannabis systems would be allowed to continue without the threat of federal interference. Now, the bill would also use federal funds to encourage states to change their cannabis laws if those laws are shown to have disproportionate have a disproportionate effect on low-income individuals and people of color. So uh, both these bills are, I guess, what can be considered a long, a long shot. But it, everything's a long shot when it first starts. You know, legalization was a long shot, a shot. I started writing about legalization in 2009, and trust me, it was a long shot. We talked in terms of, will this happen during our lifetime? Now, here we are eight years later, almost nine years later, and uh, yeah, it's happened in our lifetime. I'm not even old yet, despite what those of you watching this video might think. I am not old. I am not. <laughs> but I know when I have my beard and it's much of it is white, I look old. But no, I'm not. I'm actually relatively young. You'd be surprised how young I am. I'm middle-aged. I know that surprises a lot of you watching this show. <laughs> but back then we talked about what a long shot this was and what a long road we had to go. And now almost nobody would have guessed that we are where we are, like I said, almost nine years later. Everything starts small, and the discussion has to start somewhere. And the Marijuana Justice Act in the Senate and the House is starting that discussion where it needs to be started. If, if what Jeff Sessions did teaches us anything in rescinding the Cole memo a couple weeks ago, if it taught us anything, it's that Congress needs to change this law. Congress needs to change these laws and remove federal prohibition of cannabis to actually leave it up to the states. But I think most people agree, and we've seen polls of that effect, that's where it should be left. You know, if you don't like it, or if your state is being harmed because they're, they have marijuana prohibition, and they're surrounded by states that don't have marijuana prohibition, and they're losing jobs, and, and people, and money's flown out of the state, and they're not, they're seeing the tax revenues that they're not getting, well, they'll eventually come around to the way of thinking. But if most states have marijuana legalization, most cannabis consumers will be able to move to a state that has marijuana legalization, and uh, again, harming the state that doesn't, but at the very least, it should be left up to the states. Washington, D.C. and some old dudes in Congress should get out of the way. And ironically, to do that, they have to get in the way and even further and pass something that repeals federal prohibition, like the Marijuana Justice Act, and then they can get out of the way. They have to vote themselves out of the way when it comes to marijuana, which a lot of politicians aren't keen on doing. This last story comes from the Players' Tribune. It's by Al Harrington. If you're an NBA fan or even a college fan, I remember Al Harrington in, uh, in college. Former NBA player, now retired. He wrote an article for an article for the Players' Tribune entitled Nine Reasons to End the War on Marijuana. I said, you can, the link is in the description of this video. It's a very long article. It goes into a lot of different areas. But I want to read you the first part because he starts off the whole thing with a story about his grandmother, and I think it's indicative of the way a lot of people come to the issue of medical marijuana. <clears throat> Harrington writes, quote, I remember the first time my grandma tried cannabis. She was 80 years old. We were sitting in my garage in Denver back in 2011. I just about fell out of my chair when she said she'd try it. She was 100% serious. But the story is even crazier. The story is even crazier. I want to tell you about who my grandma is. She's a sweet little Southern Christian lady named Viola who still calls me Baby Doll. You know what? I'm not mad at that nickname. We've always been close. And the other thing is, she's always been scared of marijuana. She grew up believing what the government said about marijuana, about how it was dangerous, as dangerous as other Schedule One drugs like ecstasy and heroin. You know, all that stuff we all heard about, how it made you a criminal, a bad person, a thug. So back in 2011, it was me and my grandma, the woman who still carries a Bible with her when she travels, hanging out in the garage I had turned into a den. And we were just sitting there talking when she dropped it on me. She had been struggling with chronic pain for a long time. It was a day I'll never forget. 
My grandma had never told me about her pain before. She started telling me about the constant throbbing behind her eyes. It was getting worse to the point where it was affecting her vision. It was tough for me to see her like that, Harrington writes. Is that you, baby doll? I can barely see you there, she said, stuff like that. It was hard. She told me that her doctors prescribed her painkillers and other medicine. They weren't helping, and they were making her lethargic and depressed. She was miserable and had been going on for years. Marijuana was already legal in Colorado. So yeah, he means medically in 2011. But I didn't mess with it yet. I was still in the league and the NBA tested for it. But even more than that, I still had antiquated views about it. I viewed it the way I saw it as a kid as a scary drug and nothing more than that. But on her second day of staying with me, she shocked me by agreeing to try it. You have to remember, this is a God-fearing old lady from the South who never touched a drug in her life. She didn't drink alcohol. She didn't even like going out to restaurants. My grandma, man, old school to the core. But she was desperate for an alternative. I think that is where, and if you think about that for a minute, this woman brought up the way a lot of us were being taught, and it's, the older you are, the more this is true. Brought up being told that marijuana is evil, it will kill brain cells, it will lead you down a, a, a path to, to drug use and debauchery and death, uh, it gives you lung cancer, all the things that we heard, all the things that the, the, D.A.R.E. the D.A.R.E. program told us, all the things people like Jeff Sessions still believe to this day. This is what his grandmother was brought up in. She was scared of marijuana, but her pain was so bad, and she had lived with it in silence for so long that she could not take it anymore. And something that she'd been told her entire life not to do because it was harmful to her, she decided, I, there's nothing else I can do. I've done the painkillers. This may help. Some people say, I'm going to give it a try. To get to that point and to cross that threshold, like I said, that's indicative of the way a lot of people come to medical marijuana. They come to it when they have no other choice because it takes a lot to fight over those decades and decades of people telling you, people of authority, people that you trust, people that you think would know and they have your best interest at heart, interest at heart people telling you that it's dangerous, it's scary, stay away from it. It takes a lot to get past the, the decades of, of programming, really, is what it is. Uh, Harrington continues, the day after she had can tried cannabis, she had cannabis for the first time, she called my mom to tell her about it. My mom actually recorded the conversation because she was so shocked. On the recording, you can hear my grandma saying how her whole world felt, quote, brighter. She was calling it a miracle. I can read my Bible again, she was saying. Since then, my grandma has continued taking cannabis, and she's found the right dose for her symptoms. She's in far less pain, and it's pretty incredible to see. Now you know a little about, about, now you know a little about my grandma. She's a cool one. So let me ask you, is my grandma doing something wrong? According to federal law, she is. She's committing a crime. Is that where we're at? Are we really trying to put grandmas in prison for using marijuana to treat pain? Which is a great question. I said, go check out. It's a great article. It's, well, it's great. He goes into all the reasons that, you know, he got into it and the way they do things in the NBA. And it, like I said, the link is in the description of this video to Al Harrington over at the Players Tribune. Dot com. That's going to do it for us on the Marijuana Times show for today and for the week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you to NatureSideCannabis.com for sponsoring the show, Organic All Natural Pesticides. NatureSideCannabis.com. Everybody, go check out all the videos. Share, keep sharing, liking, commenting, all that. Help us spread the truth about cannabis through these videos and through the stories on MarijuanaTimes.org. Help us grow the show and fight back against the propaganda that we're still fighting to this day. We need your help. It's the Marijuana Time Show. I am Joe Claire, January 19th, 2018. We'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching.